Welcome back to the second part of this lecture. Unfortunately, the consideration of a symmetric pressure distribution only holds for the special case of a non-rotating tire. Due to wheel road rotation, the vertical pressure distribution becomes asymmetric, with the larger portion in the direction the wheel is moving. Until now we have considered the tire simply as a nonlinear spring. However, rubber as an elastomer is a viscoelastic material. This means that when deforming the tire structure, not only pure elastic effects but also viscous dissipation or damping effects occur. Now this asymmetric shape of the pressure distribution is based on effects due to viscoelastic properties of the tire. When an element of the tire structure enters the contact area with the road, it is loaded and compressed. When leaving the contact area, it is unloaded again. Rubber as a viscoelastic material shows higher stress when being loaded in comparison to being unloaded. This difference leads to an increase of the vertical pressure at the beginning of the contact patch and a loss, which is dissipated mainly as heat. It is often shown as a hysteresis loop, as depicted here on the right side. Viscous effects are velocity dependent effects, which means faster compression leads to higher forces and therefore to a larger hysteresis and higher losses, which are represented by the area within this hysteresis, WL. The amount of hysteretic loss at a certain deflection rate is mainly determined by the structure and material properties of the tire. That also means that the overall vertical tire force is not only a function of the vertical deflection, it is also a function of the derivative of the deflection, the deflection rate, delta Z dot. Therefore, vertical tire force consists of a nonlinear static part and an additional dynamic part to consider these viscohyperelastic properties. These representations apply to flat and rigid road. For uneven or soft roads, these diagrams will look different. This effect on the rolling tire, leading to hysteretic loss, is better known as rolling resistance. It is an important factor in reducing fuel consumption and CO2 emissions of the overall vehicle. The rolling resistance can contribute between 5 to 20% of the fuel consumption of a passenger car or light truck and between 14 to 40% for a heavy truck. There are different ways of determining the rolling resistance and also different definitions. There are two main definitions of rolling resistance on a flat and rigid road. In one, it is treated as a force loss counteracting the driving force. In the second definition, it is treated as an energy loss. The test standard ISO 2800-580, for example, uses the energy definition. In vehicle dynamics, the force definition is the prevailing definition used. Let's assume a rolling wheel in steady state conditions, subjected to a wheel load F set, a driving torque T drive, and a drag force F drive, as depicted here on the left side. The tire contact forces are described by a resulting longitudinal force Fx and a resulting vertical force Fz. Due to the asymmetry of the vertical pressure distribution, a horizontal shift Ex of the resulting vertical tire force occurs. By inspecting the torque equilibrium with respect to the wheel center, we can see that not only the longitudinal tire force with its lever RL is causing a torque that counteracts the driving torque. Due to its horizontal shift, the vertical tire force Fz causes an additional torque that counteracts the driving torque as well as the wheel rotation. This additional torque is called resistance torque. By rearranging the torque equilibrium with respect to the longitudinal force, we can see that the second term on the right side of the equation represents a force that reduces the longitudinal force during driving. Now, when we consider a freely rolling wheel, which means that a driving torque is equal to zero, we can further simplify this expression. In this case, the remaining longitudinal force becomes a resistance or drag force Fr, which now acts in the opposite direction and counteracts the longitudinal motion of the wheel. 
A division of this drag or loss force by the vertical force Fz corresponds to the force definition of the rolling resistance and is described by the rolling resistance coefficient Fr. In this case, the rolling resistance coefficient is determined by the shift of the vertical force Ex divided by the lodius tire radius Rl. With this simple consideration, we found a description of the resistance force, which is proportional to the rolling resistance coefficient and the vertical load, and counteracts the wheel motion. In contrast to the force definition, the energy definition is based on considering the total power flow and equilibrium at the driven wheel, as shown here on the right side for a longitudinal wheel motion. It is a very general approach of describing wheel torque and force transmission that enables to consider additional phenomena than with the force definition. In the energy definition, the rolling resistance is described by the torque Ty and is considered as a general dissipation loss. In addition, sliding losses can be considered. Similar to the force definition, a rolling resistance coefficient can also be derived for this formulation. However, energy and power flows are more advanced topics in tire mechanics. So we will leave it at that for now. As mentioned, the force definition prevails in vehicle dynamics. Finally, it is important to note that rolling resistance due to hysteretic loss is a torque loss, regardless of treating it as a drag force. There are additional sources for energy loss at the rolling wheel. These include, for example, losses based on aerodynamic resistances of tire and rim, losses associated with wheel bearings and other powertrain components. There can also be additional losses due to compression and displacement on soft roads. Often these losses are not distinguished and summed up to a total rolling resistance of the tire, which can be misleading. That's it for now. In this lecture, we got a basic insight into vertical tire force transmission and wheel load carrying mechanisms as the most basic functions of a tire. We will continue in the next lecture with the horizontal tire force transmission.